we're going to do some chisel exercises to help you improve your skills with this essential tool. The first thing you need to do is you need to have some sharp chisels. I've hollow ground mine and I freehand honed them on Japanese water stones up to about 4,000 grit. I just don't think you need to go any higher than that. You can sharpen your chisels any way that seems to make the most sense to you. Okay? The next thing you're going to need is a block of wood. Now, I've got one here that's three quarters of an inch thick, it's four inches wide, and about nine inches long. When I was in school for woodworking, Werner Dorr, my teacher, uh, had us make a block by hand that had oh, 11 or 12 different hand tool processes involved in it, you know, just to get it to this point. Um, I've adapted that block to include pretty much only the chisel exercises, although you had to do a little bit extra. Learning to use the chisel is cor uh, correctly is essential to get tight fitting joints and for touching the mop when you don't quite get it right the first time. All the aspects of today's exercises will help you gain greater control over your chisels so that you struggle a whole lot less when it comes to time to you know really finesse your work. I just went into my bandsaw, I marked off an area that I came in an inch and an eighth from each edge and about an inch from the end and just cut that out on my bandsaw. I rounded this corner off. Now you can round it off any way you see fit. I just did it on my bandsaw to whatever looked good to me and then I just touched it up on my sander. Uh, the next thing I did was I drew a line from that one inch line across and I started cutting out just a one shoulder and uh, cheek of a, of a tenon. And what we're gonna do with this block is we're gonna work on all of those different cuts that we need to know how to do with our chisels and build up that skill. Now you can see the other thing that I've got here is I've got a little cherry diamond that I've cut out. Uh, it's an inch and a half wide and about two and a quarter inches long. I just marked my centers plotted out those distances, connected the dots, sawed it out on the bandsaw, and then what I did was uh, I took my block plane and I hand planed it off at about a, oh, it's getting smaller towards the bottom. I hand planed on all four sides down um, till they were nice and straight and they were undercut about four degrees, five degrees, something like that, not too much. Everything is gonna be pretty much done with the chisel from this point. We've gotta do some marking and some layout stuff, but primarily, it's gonna be all chisel work. So what we need to do is, in this area right here, we're going to plot out a mortise that is as wide as that cut out on the end. So we're gonna set our um, combination square to one and an eighth. There we go, close enough. And what I wanna do is mark off a line on each side. And then I want to come over an inch from that cutout. And we're going to go about two inches long. And what we're going to do is we're going to make this into a mortise. I know it's a pretty big mortise, but <clears throat> this way it's going to help you be able to learn how to chop your sides perfectly square and get the bottom of the mortise perfectly flat. What I want to do is clamp it down right to my bench. And move that over just a little. And I'm going to take a good sharp chisel. And I want to start with chop cuts. I want to chop on the ends to sever the fibers. And then I want to do some light chop cuts up the side, and then we're gonna waste out that middle. We wanna go down about three eighths of an inch. So we want to 
There's multiple ways to hold your chisels here for a chop cut. You can either grasp it right on the handle like this and hold it straight up and down. Um, I sometimes hold it like a pencil down, down below, but at this point what happens is I can't really see what's going on down low. So I'm just gonna grab it up top there, step slightly away from my pencil line and chop down. I wanna make sure that I am doing so fairly square. I don't really wanna lean my chisel over at all. I wanna go straight down into this mortise. And I'll chop the other end real quick. And I won't take as heavy a chop going with the grain, simply because probably end up splitting my board if I did. So a lighter chop going with the grain. Chop across. All right, so I've got that outlined. Now I wanna remove that waste. I know you power tool guys are saying router, but this is a hand tool exercise. We wanna learn, you, even if you use lots of power tools, you need to know how to use your chisels. So for me, what that means is I'm gonna take a series of chop cuts. right across that waste area. And now I can go in right across the grain and sort of just chisel that stuff right out of there. Helps if I lock my clamp down a little more. What those initial chop cuts do, as long as you keep your hammer blows relatively similar in strength, it's gonna give you a reasonably flat bottom on this thing to start. Now, I'm just gonna to go to a wider chisel because it's the way I roll. So now I'm gonna do it again. That one needs to go just a touch deeper and so does this one. Then I'll have to go back to my other chisel. Chop those down. Take that way straight out of there. And we're getting pretty close to three eighths of an inch in depth. So I'm not gonna really wail away on these too hard. Let's Those out of there. All right. Let's set our combination square to right around three eighths. 
and I can feel them still just a little up in some spots there. So I'm gonna work bevel down, and what I wanna do is just slice across those fibers and start to level up that bottom and clean it up nice and flat and nice and smooth. Check it again. It's sort of hitting right there. That's not too bad. My sidewalls seem nice and square. I can check those with the square as I do it. Looks pretty good. So I need to take just a tiny little bit right here. started on the chop cuts for this because, you know, that's everybody's favorite part of working with a chisel is just getting in there and making those nice heavy chop cuts. It makes you feel like you're accomplishing something. And now what I'm going to do is just pair those sidewalls right back to my line. If I'm sticking away a little at all. Excellent. So what I've got is a nice, even depth square block. So I'm gonna see if I can twist this around so you can actually see everything that I'm seeing. So if I come in here this way, you can sort of see that. There we go, we've got some light there. I've got a nice square sidewall. See if I can twist that so you can see it. This end is square. This end is square. And that sidewall is square. And I'm hitting all across the bottom there. And my bottom is nice and smooth. Again, I started with the chop cuts because that's everybody's favorite. That's the easiest thing you can do is chop. Okay, getting it square, getting that bottom flat, a little tougher. Okay, some of that's gonna come from the next little segment that we're gonna do, where we're gonna start to pair in, we're gonna start by chopping a little bit on our end here, and then I'm gonna pair that end grain in. I'm also gonna chop off that, um, the waste on my half tenon there. Okay. 